Now a reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to some who sow good seed in this field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed seed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these seeds come from, and the weeds that came with them? And he answered, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, as we dwell on these readings for today and the seventh Sunday of Pentecost, um, we do so in a world context that, that palpably exhibits both good and bad things that are happening, of weeds and wheat, if you will, as we navigate through this coronavirus pandemic you know, since we gathered here in this place, as I look around here, it was four months ago on March 15th, we have experienced the, the weeds of COVID-19 cases and deaths. We've experienced the weeds of unemployment, of economic insecurity, of racial rancor. Yet we've also experienced the wheat of essential workers sacrificing life to heal or provide or deliver. We've seen the wheat of individual and community resilience and volunteerism. We've seen the weed of government aid and local charity and of racial solidarity. I watched this past week, as maybe many of you, as our governor and leaders in the South Carolina School District spoke about the wheat of education, living amongst the weeds of COVID, uh, as well as subject poverty and, uh, or abject poverty and its toll on families and communities. And we realize that some weeds have been with us longer than others. I read news this past week focusing on weeds like fighting over mask wearing or suicide related to depression or infidelities to work or relationships or our planet or even faith. Alongside, though, the wheat of people feeding people, of potential COVID-19 vaccines that are reaching stage three, of couples getting married, of babies being born and, and being baptized, of families that are being strengthened through this unusual but connecting time together. So we get it. We know what it's like to love in the tension of life's good and life's bad elements. And we feel the raw but the real episodic response to life's grief you know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross talked about the five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. But we also experience the rejuvenation and even the rootedness of the Holy Spirit's fruits, of love and joy and peace and patience, kindness and generosity and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So with our dwelling in the world, in the world today, Today we gather to dwell in God's word. And this is what we hear. 
We hear verses that tell us that there are no gods besides God. We, tell us, we hear verses that tell us God's way is truth. We hear verses that say the Holy Spirit of God enables us to pray as God's children, that it keeps us in solidarity with creation, and that it gives us unseen hope that God will liberate and create from bondage to death and decay. We read in God's word that we live in a world where evil and good exist like weeds and wheat, but God's presence helps us know the difference and to navigate. So what jumps out at you as we've heard these readings for today? What questions do today's passages raise for you in the midst of your life and context? And is there a nudge that you might be experiencing from God that's talking to you specifically to say, here's what I want you to know, here's what I want you to hear, here's what I want you to do? When I was eight years old, my, uh, my dad made a career decision. We were living in Charleston at the time, and he was a nuclear engineer, and he worked at the naval shipyard there. And he decided to get out after 12 years and become a professor of math and physics at Trident Technical College back then. Um, and so we moved kind of like from a city dwelling, Charleston area, to a more rural setting, at least back then, Somerville. Now it's kind of grown up. Um, but my eight-year-old mind, as I was thinking about it this week, I saw lots of weeds back then. You know, I saw the loss of friends. I saw the loss of familiar sights that I had grown accustomed to in my young life. I saw a loss of um, what I thought were weeds of the, uh, the hundred-year-old house that was creaky and didn't have air conditioning. I saw the loss of not having uh, my church friends at St. John's downtown Charleston. And I saw the loss of my old school and my old teachers. And it felt like a lot of weeds. To top it off, just after a couple of months of into the move, as we moved from Charleston to Somerville, my parents had been on a retreat with the local uh, church over the weekend. We're coming back early Sunday morning. And an 18 year old who was driving a car fell asleep, crossed the center line, and hit them head on at 50 miles an hour. My dad was in the hospital for eight days. My mother, though, was in the hospital for three months. All of this right after we moved, leaving all the things that we'd known before in, in this new environment. But in the midst of all these weeds that I was experiencing at eight years of age, there was wheat growing all around. My grandmother came to live with us and I got to know her in ways I'd never known her before. New teachers seemed to emerge from in our new setting and provided the additional tender loving care, the TLC that, that just seemed to hit the spot. Um, and I realized that out in the country, we could have pets now. And so I did. We had a dog. We had, each of us had cats, me and my three siblings. I had a hamster and we were welcomed into a new church that was just two blocks away so we could walk every Sunday morning and back. I had teachers who instilled a love for reading in me and math in me and science in me. And I even had one teacher, Miss Gillespie, uh, who had a love for buffalo that she instilled in me. She used to show us the old, uh, old uh, uh, videos of trains going out west and hitting buffalo and she would run them backwards because she didn't want the buffalo to be hit. And so they would be falling down and stand back up as she went backwards. And she instilled in us a love for animals. And one more thing that was really cool for me at age 8 and 10 and 11 was that I got to ride a bike in a neighborhood in a small town. It was very freeing. Now, a lot of what the specifics that did occur, the wheats and the weeds, were a reflection of life's joys and dangers and advances and setbacks. But in hindsight for me, hindsight's 2020, right? Uh, there was, looking back, this pulse, this lifeline that kept us all tethered as we navigated. And that was simply faith. My parents were people of faith. My mother was a musician and organist in church. My dad was on the council and taught Sunday school and did all those things. And we always went to church. And they still made mistakes, don't get me wrong. And I make mistakes today just like my parents did. But they based what they did on what they believed. And our perception of who we are as people of God 
um, affects everything else. And our behavior leads us down a path of life, even though we make decisions along the way that change our direction. And as I look back on that, I realize that in the midst of what I thought were weeds, there was much wheat. Today's gospel lesson, Jesus is teaching again, and as usual, he's using parables, which are earthly stories and heavenly meanings. And he put before them, it says, another parable today. The kingdom of heaven, he said, may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. Now, as I dwelled on this word, the questions that I had are probably the ones that you've asked before, too. Why? Why is there evil in the world? Why do bad things happen to good people? And how is it that the innocent suffer? I think these are important questions, and they're not just questions about faith, but they're about life itself. But as we get older, we realize it's all about faith. But the parable gives at best only part of an answer, yet it also makes a promise. And it's the promise that may prove more immediately helpful for us than the answer. So the answer is that there's evil in the world. Jesus describes the one who sowed weeds among the wheat as the enemy, and that the, that is what evil is, the enemy. And it's an opponent to God's wish that all people would have an abundant life. Now, that might not seem like much of an answer for us and when we want a lot of specifics in today's world. <clears throat> but it does remind us of one important thing, that God doesn't desire suffering. So when someone dies, it's not because God needed another angel in the choir. And when we suffer some illness or tragedy, um, it's not because God wants to test us or make us stronger, although that can happen. There is evil and unjust suffering in the world, and each time they occur, they stand against God's desire and will as the enemy. And so here's where the promise comes in. It's in the end that God will make what is wrong right, that God will sort out the weeds from the wheat, the parable says, and it brings all, good, all things to a good end. And this doesn't bring immediate relief that we may crave, but it does, it does promise that our patience and our endurance and struggle in the meantime, isn't in vain. And this promise, in other words, doesn't make everything better, but it does make a difference. You know, when I was thinking about the move story that I had when I was eight years of age, I didn't have all the answers back then. I certainly couldn't see everything with my small mind. I did have a set of parents, though, whom I trusted, who promised me and my siblings that the move was necessary and more than promise, they showed through their life, their work, their sacrifice, that we as children would be loved, that we would be safe. My life circumstances felt like my little world was rocked, that it was changing and crashing in around me. And top it all off, my parents get in this accident that I just still, for years, couldn't figure out why that happened. But my, but my loving circumstances, the provisions of my parents and others who stepped in to help during a difficult time stayed the same, uh, this love. And it even took on deeper meaning, especially as I got older and looked back. In fact, some clarity didn't come until I returned with my siblings back to Somerville in the year 2012 and earlier this year in 2020 when we buried my parents and they, they both died. You know, when you gather around with siblings and you talk about the past and you think about memories and you pull up stuff and stories that, that maybe you hadn't thought of in a while, um, we realized that we were revisiting and reliving all that our parents had taken us through. We reviewed and we thought through our parents' lives from the memories we had, but also it was also from a newfound appreciation that we now have at this stage in life you know, time and again, we would tell a story or remember something, and then we'd realize, hey, our parents were younger than we were now when that happened. And all of a sudden, my parents seemed much more adventurous, much more faithful, much more loving than even memory served. And I saw, in retrospect, more and more wheat than I ever did of the weeds. They were daring in their love, it seems, 
for God and for us as family. They were loving parents and they wanted good for their children and they were doing the best that they could to provide and sometimes they didn't know any better but they tried it in faith anyway. And that promise that they lived out, that they would do their best to try to take care of us, of caring for us, of trying to do good, it became foundational for me. And so Jesus' telling of this parable today in today's gospel doesn't, doesn't provide all the answer, but it helps us to be clear about God's intention. And its promise invites us to share in the gift of an abundant and a meaningful life even now, encouraging us to carry on, trusting that God will bring all things to a good end and freeing us then to do our best to care for those around us now to make sure we focus on the wheat and not the weeds and that may not be everything but on most days i found that that is enough and it's a gift that we are part of god's creation we are loved by god and we're called to be loving servants